So where did we get the addition symbol? Well, the addition symbol, a lot of these things iterated over time from a couple of different people in their books. A guy named Robert Record in the Whetstone of Wit made very clear to the world that we needed to use universal symbols. Did the world use universal symbols right away? No. Um, but he put it out there. A different guy named Luca Pacioli was using P for plus and M for minus. And so that's where we get plus and minus, okay? But the idea I want to show you, so for the, the plus sign, it came from, the, from when we would write out uh, we would write out our symbols. So it was five and two. Well, do you know what an ampersand is? An ampersand is the symbol if I said, oh, you and I, you and me, right? You and me, that's the ampersand. Well, this is an ampersand. I mean, I've actually gotten it down to where it actually looks completely like a plus sign, but I meant to put an ampersand. Um, it was it was it was the et, okay? In Latin, et is and. So so then this became the symbol for summation, and it all goes back to the number line because there was a geometry to what people were figuring out, okay? Arithmetic is pure numbers, and we dropped the geometry. But I'm going to do a quick little uh uh. <laughs> picture of the symbols and we're going to use it for subtraction too. Okay. So five and two. So what you would say is you have, so here's zero. So you have the space of five at two, but then you would, so you would take the space of two and, and, and at, and so you take the five and two. It's like playing Monopoly, right? You roll a dice, one of the die is five, the other die is two, you go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, right? And you land on seven, okay? That's the summation, and that's how we got the symbol plus, the plus symbol. Now, the subtraction symbol minus, it was M minus by Pacioli. So the M became, it. the, the dash was a symbol of the separation, okay? So subtraction was written like with an M, okay, 5M2, and that became the dash, okay, of the separation of 5 and 2. So now, again, go back to our picture, and you're saying, okay, we don't want at 5 and 2. We want uh, the, de the separation. So what is the separation between 2 and 5, right? Well, now the separation is 1, 2, 3, right? So 5 minus 2 is 3 because it's the separation. So I think a lot of what, what happens a lot is that people, people seem to think at a certain point in time or teachers seem to think at a certain point in time, I'm editorializing now, that you shouldn't use your fingers or you shouldn't use, like if you're, if you're a smart math student, you won't use a picture. That is BS. Everybody uses a picture. Sidebar, I use pictures all the way through my bachelor's of science in mathematics and even beyond. Because, like, it's just, that's how it iterated. It iterated from pictures. It iterated from your fingers. There's a reason why we have base 10. Base 10. Deca 10. Okay, so multiplication isn't quite as fun. Multiplication, as I said, is batched addition. So, of course, it's going to iterate on addition, right? So, instead of the summation and, it becomes a diagonal one. But that looks like an X. Okay, and then when you get into multiplication, it was a guy named uh, Leibniz, Gottfried Leibniz, and uh, he suggested we use a dot, which we use. If you're using your keyboard, it'll be the little star symbol, right? And the, the keyboard connects the star symbol. It computes in these devices, right, to be multiplication. Um, multiplication is batched addition. That's why the symbol is intended to look so similar. Sadly, Rene Descartes used X in the coordinate system, and then X in the multiplication symbol got confused, so we started using a dot, and it has been confusing the students of mathematics every day since. But I got to tell you, it's a lot better than the symbols they used before. Okay, division, my favorite. 
Division, okay, division is the symbol of what's happening, okay? Let's go back to our five and two, okay, okay. This confuses children around the world. Division is both an, a, an operation and an implicit in, an, in the number because it's a fraction, okay? So we still use these, but they're, they're all the same thing. But unfortunately, a lot of teachers teach them as separate, okay? So first of all, we're saying we're cutting the number two ways. So you have five cut two ways. That's division. Five cut two ways. Five cut two ways. This symbol, do you see it? It's saying these dots are beep, cut, beep ways, right? It's, it's leaving a vacuum for you to fill in the blank. So if we rewrote division this way, 5 divided by 2. I know my handwriting is terrible. If we rewrote it 5 divided by 2, okay? If we re rewrote it 5 divided by 2, what this symbol is showing this, right? Dot, line, dot, right? So this symbol is saying we're going to cut the number. And you're cutting the numerator, right? That's what a fraction is. This we call a ratio, okay? But a ratio is a division, and the symbol of the colon was used in division. It's division. It's division. Now, we're going to, it took a long time when I was talking about this before, and the recording that didn't have microphone audio because I messed that up. Um, that I talked about long division, okay? And we're, I'm going to pause that because I'm going to do a whole different video on long division. Um, lo the symbology, let's just write it down, okay? 5 divided by 2. Sorry, I'm rewriting these things. Uh, long division, right? This is what I'm calling actionable division because what this does is this converts the, the cutting into base 10, into our deci system, okay? Decimal. All of these, you can't, you, there's no rubric for how to turn these into a decimal. They have to stay just in your mind. So you have to know how to convert. If you know 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, right? 2.5. That's an easy one. But when the numbers get really big, right, we have to use the actionable division, which puts it into a very clear deci system, which we're going to talk about because that deci system is actually the same as polynomial long division, which is super useful. Finally, last symbol, you know the one, don't you? You know the one. We're, we're not going to go over inequalities right now, although there's a history of those two. Nothing can be more equal than itself. Okay, so the equal sign actually, and the reason why it's supposed to be, the, they're meant to be the same size in the same way, parallel, okay? Is one is for the one symbol, and the other is for the other symbol. In a way, it's like a reciprocity. It's like a, a, a circuit, okay? And in fact, when you, if you ever study electrical engineering, circuitry symbol, symbols look similar. A, B. A is the same as B is the same as A. They are equal. Nothing can be more equal than itself. That's where the symbol comes from. And I'm gonna give you a little pep talk now. Are you ready for a Miss T's editorial? Editorial pep talk. Okay, the symbols, math is a language. The symbology that we use has been iterated and discussed by some of the greatest minds in the history of humanity. Not just like the smartest people today, not just like the valedictorian of your class, the most intellectual people in the history of humanity over the course of thousands of years, these grand ideas have been distilled into this common language, the only common language on the face of the planet to this day. And you get to be a part of it. Math will set you free to understanding everything. everything. I'm just here to help. Okay, that's my pep talk. Sometimes teachers get a little burned out. So if your teacher is getting burned out, just ask them privately. They always love a student who really cares. All right, until next time, friends.
Happy math. Happy life. Enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy the sunrise. And pray for my hair. Okay. <laughs> Have a good one.